Like several others involved with Curb Your Enthusiasm, David Steinberg has ties with Larry David that go way back. He also had a lengthy and incredibly impressive career before Curb. Here's David. So, you have quite the track record, needless to say, in comedy, and I was wondering if you could share your thoughts when you went on the set of Curb Your Enthusiasm to direct for the first time and how much of an outlier it was in terms of other things that you've done. As a director, you know, it's mostly technical. You're, you're lining up the shots and you're trying to figure out how things are going. You want to, you know, you have to connect with the uh, cinematographer and sound guys. So it's, a lot, it's very, very technical. But Larry David, is the opposite of the Larry David that you ever see on camera doing the most outrageous things. He is a generous person, one of the most generous in so many ways that I can't even describe. And uh, most people who've worked with him, I have a feeling, would tell you the same thing. And he's a committed friend. If you're a friend of Larry's, you're a friend for always. And he does whatever he can to to help and he's the kind of person that if he heard me saying this he'd puke his guts out <laughs> but it is who he is he is a, exactly the opposite of the character that he plays <laughs> but david what about the idea that there's not a shooting script well when you're talking to someone like me whose background is second city right right for before Larry David, it, it is the ideal way in which to work, to work it out and do it over and hear the sound. Uh, it allows the actors a certain kind of freedom. The writers then could rewrite after hearing the, the language and the rhythm and the tone that you're getting. And Larry was very bold to attempt this. You know, we were doing this right at the beginning of Curb, and even in Seinfeld, they would try and do that, but the network were driving them crazy. Larry liked the idea of the spontaneity of it, and then rewriting on the spot, and then, you know what this comes down to, Jim, is like, no one works as hard as this group, like, uh, like Larry David, writer and friends and all that. They just aren't happy until it's exactly right by all their estimations, whatever it is, whatever the scene is, whatever everything. It is, they just work harder than every, anyone else. And I've been on a lot of sets, but Curb Your Enthusiasm is work, and the advantage is friendship with people that are really uh, funny, interested of pushing the envelope and stuff like that. I guess it almost has to be that way, right, David? Because given what Larry, he went through a terrible time on Saturday Night Live and he was had some financial difficulties and then Seinfeld comes along. And so it seems like, particularly given his personality, if he is going to get back into the comedy business and a difficult one at that, it's got to make sense, which is like the network's going to leave him alone. He's going to be surrounded by friends. Yes, exactly. That, that's exactly right. And he can't work any other way. He, he knows what he wants. He knows what he's looking for, although it's always elusive. He's always pushing the envelope. He always wants to challenge himself more and more. Uh, he loves the uh, the negative <laughs> in personalities and likes to explore them and doesn't think that they should be cast aside. He's just he's so interesting that way, and and incidentally, in uh, you know everyone I'm sure you're going to be talking to and myself included, we're very good friends, and. And he's a very, very devoted friend. He's, he's totally the opposite of the character that he's playing on camera. So take me inside your head, though, when you're directing, because the lack of a script and the fact that you're continuing to do things, you know, sometimes many, many times, how do you determine when you've done it enough and when do you determine maybe you can push them a little bit more or one more time. And are you talking with Larry during that and getting his feedback as well? Or do you save that for the editing room? No, you don't want to save anything for the editing room Uh, because you're going to have to be there anyway, because what you're doing is 
taking place in the present. And this is working for now, for now. Now, what happens when I put it before that scene and after that scene? And it, it takes a skill. And uh, the director, Larry, Larry, that's not Larry's job, that's a director's job, is to know how the scenes are going to balance out against each other because often we're seeing the end scene, uh, like in a film, before you even shoot the opening scene. So the key here is just catching the rhythm. And Larry has a certain rhythm. He's not afraid of revealing things, not necessarily about himself, but about the characters. And, uh, and he created something that now everyone is just, you know, falling into lockstep and doing. Uh, when we started with the network, they were nervous. Where's the script? Where's the dialogue? Where's this? Where's that? And somehow we managed to survive it. When you hear a take that you love, yes, are you tempted to just quick move on to the next thing, or do you feel like, well, just in case for some reason that doesn't, let's do a couple more? What's your methodology in, the, in uh, moments like I that? If I love it, I move on. Right. So every director is different. And then what happens though when you get to editing and that scene that you loved so much? Larry may be saying to you, well, I don't really like that for whatever reason. And so what happens at that point? Well, editing is just another version of writing. So you expect to find surprises and you expect it to find changes because we're doing a scene that is separate from the script as we're doing it. So all we want to do is get every, as a director, you want every version of the potential of the emotion of the scene. You don't want, if it's angry, you've got to be real angry, and then you want to be a little bit angry, and then maybe I shouldn't be that angry. You want to get every version that you possibly can. And the value of improvisation is that uh, it, it allows you that. And I think that what, when Larry and I started to work together, he wanted my Second City experience. I had been there for five years at that point at Second City, and he wanted to tap into that, and he did automatically. He just knew how to do it because he knew it would be more spontaneous. I knew this is comedy. It, you can't dissect the patient. It'll die. So let's have some fun. Try this. Try that. You know, and yet it's about the most written shows that I've ever worked on. Are you ready to make your next move? Well, Squarespace wants to be with you when you do. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to make their next move known to the world. With Squarespace, people can lock down their ideas with a unique domain, create a website to launch their idea, a portfolio to get their project out there, and an online store to officially open for business. There's so much that Squarespace can do for you. So what are you waiting for? Make your next move with Squarespace. Create a beautiful website or online store with award-winning templates. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade, ever. And Squarespace offers award-winning 24-7 customer support with fully transparent and simple to execute setup. Squarespace is used by a wide range of creatives, people, and businesses. Use offer code ORIGINS for 10% off your first purchase of a website and domain. That's offer code ORIGINS. And make your next move with Squarespace. Well, you, you directed episode two of the very first season. Yes, I did. Which was a great episode. Oh, and, thank you. I see you saw that, yes. Oh, I've seen them all. And uh, I was just wondering, how much of an obligation or a desire did you have to continue on the path that Bob Whitey had done with the pilot and the documentary before that? Or did you feel like you had some leeway to kind of do some other different things, uh, maybe possibly share what those were? The pilot originally, or well, just the, in the first episode, um, when I was speaking with Bob, he said he kind of, you know, poured the foundation, so to speak, in terms of the approach. Are you talking about this season? No, no, episode one in two thousand. Oh, one in two thousand. Yeah, no, it, it it evolved. Every director has his own thumbprint, and uh, it evolves through the from show to show to show, and. Um, uh, my style is very different than Bob Wiley's. And, uh, Could you talk about that for a second? Mm, I just did. That's oh. a second. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Touche. Uh, this is Larry's baby. He, he guides us through what he has in mind. He allows directors who are write, writer kind of directors, I guess I'm that category, he, he allows you any version that you want to try of the scene. So you have, you have so many options because when you, you're doing a scene that ha has to be edited, and that means it's going to follow a previous scene that we might not have even shot then. So you have to give yourself as many options as you possibly can get uh, and not just go for laughs, which we, we know are going to be there because Larry's such a good writer, and uh, that's pretty much how it works. Some of the cast members said in the first season they had no idea if this thing was even going to survive an entire season, let alone run. I, I, I don't think I ever uh, saw it that way. I saw it as unique. Re Here's the thing about Larry. He is genuinely funny. He's just, he, the humor, it, 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 his DNA is humor, and it's Larry David's kind of humor. He's not afraid to reveal anything about himself. If, if he's, if, when he's doing stand-up, he would do that. And he is as bold as you get in how much he wants to sort of dig into himself and reveal that humorously in characters on stage. You know, Larry's like, Larry's in the Philip Roth, Saul Bellow kind of, forgive me for being chauvinistic, but Jewish tradition of angst and comedy and contemporizing it so it belongs in this decade. Right. Wow, that's quite the pantheon. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Given all that you've done, what was it like adding Curb Your Enthusiasm to your portfolio? How meaningful was it to you? It gets me work everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. People are so in awe of Curb Your Enthusiasm. They should be. But we didn't know that we were creating a masterpiece. Uh, I don't say that about myself, but about Larry. We, d we didn't know that we were creating this formula for how comedy should be done. The improvisation, you know, I'm, you know, my background was Second City, so I could contribute that. But uh, the, to allow the actors to improvise and to, we could then hear if the script that we had in mind or just the few words that we had in mind are good enough and you get to get a loose, comfortable feeling and you're able to give yourself options in the editing room that you normally wouldn't have. Parachute sheets are the softest and most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. And why is that? Well, simply put, it's because they're made from the very best fabrics. Parachute sheets have a clean, minimalistic style that come in neutral colors, so they work perfect in any bedroom. And the best part of parachute is that their sheets get softer with time. Plus, if you're a person who wants to make an impact on the world, and frankly, who doesn't, then Parachute is the company for you. They've partnered with the United Nations Foundation to donate malaria prevention bed nets, and they've already donated 16,000 so far. Here's another great part of the story. Parachute offers a 60-night trial, so if you don't love your sheets, you just send them back, no questions asked. Now, if you're wondering how that makes a positive impact on the world, well, all returns are donated to Habitat for Humanity, and that's a great cause. So don't wait. Visit ParachuteHome.com Origins for free shipping and returns. Again, that's ParachuteHome.com Origins for free shipping and returns. It doesn't get any easier. It's time to get better sleep with Parachute. When I first heard back in 2000 about the show and who was going to be involved and mm -hmm. I heard your name, I actually thought that you were going to be on camera and part, particularly given your training yes. uh, and I had watched you on television for so much. Was there ever a part of you that wanted to be like Ted or Mary or JB or somebody else as one of Larry's friends or Richard Lewis or somebody like that? Because you easily could have done it, if you don't mind me saying. Yes. Uh, oh, I, I would have enjoyed that. I would probably not want to be a friend because we are, we are friends. And I can't imagine that there's a better way in which to lose a friendship than to 
start to work out your friendship on camera because remember everything as as you know is improvised so you reveal things about yourself i often wonder when the line between uh reality and fiction crosses with larry and richard lewis in the editing room <laughs> <laughs> Most everyone with Richard Lewis is in the editing room. (laughs) (laughs) And, incidentally, an adorable person as well. One of the things that I came upon was that when you were hosting The Tonight Show, Susie Essman was a guest. Is is my research correct? Yes, yes. So what was it like to work with Susie on the show? Well, Susie is so gifted, and she's so willing to reveal any negative version of herself. She's comfortable revealing things that no one would reveal about themselves. She's, she, you know, Susie's not someone who says fuck a lot in real life, but on camera, it's a symphony of fuck a lot when she's there. Right. Ah, go fuck yourself. It, it never, ever does it make me laugh? <laughs> Working with Susie is unbelievable because she gets everything so fast and she gets the whole thing. She, the, the truth of it is, if you're an actor that is comfortable with your scene and you're not connected to what that show is about, you're not going to fulfill what we need from you. You have to know the whole thing and then work your nuances out as a result of how that your scene would play then. Susie's an expert at that. You know, she makes fuck sound like, hi, how are you? You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of her favorite words, even in real life. It seems like one of the legacies of Curb Your Enthusiasm is to, like, let's look at Susie for a second. Someone who, it wasn't like she's 21 years old and she just graduated from, you know, comedy school or something. She had been around for, you know, quite some time. That's and true. yet, uh, you know, most of us at least didn't understand just how fantastic she was. And all of a sudden now there comes along this vehicle called Curb Your Enthusiasm and people are like, well, where has she been all the time? Yeah, well, there's no one else that could get the laughs that Susie does for whatever the dialogue or the scene is in Curb. She she gets it in a way that no one does right from the beginning. She, you know, the hardest thing to do is to play anger because if the viewer, audience, whatever we want to call it, if they get a sense that you really are angry, that's not going to help the comedy. You have to hold something back that lets us know that yes, it's scary and this and that, but it's delicate. It's a it's a balancing act. She knows exactly how to do it. She knows exactly how to hold back. She knows when to do too much or little. She's she. You, you don't have to direct Susie. You just have to sit there in awe and and say, okay, we've got that one. Is there anything else you want to try? She is, uh, you know, right up there in the sort of comic genius category. In the third season, you directed Mary Joseph and Larry, which yes. I just, I mean, I have to admit, I, I, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just so yes, one crazy. One of my favorites, absolutely. It, it's just so crazy. And was there ever a time, given the fact that religion was involved, where yes. you were thinking to yourself, or Larry was thinking, are we going too far, or can we get away with this, or do you just go and don't think about it? Well... As you know, I I think I'd thrown a show or two off the air for my religious self somewhere along the way. Yes, yes. Uh, So we just thought, really, there's you can't be preaching any point of view. You can't be preaching point of view. The morality of Curb has to come from just doing it. The more negative you get, somehow you have to pull back from that, but you don't reward the audience like in a scene from Brigadoon afterwards. We just move on to the next, you know, version of how do we explore this negativity or this positivity. And it's a delicate balance. Well, well, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Jim. I so enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much, David. Okay. No. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this Origins original. Please be sure to subscribe to Origins for new chapters every month, along with other Origins Originals and Origins Conversations. Thanks so much. For Origins, I'm Jim Miller.